Hey guys, welcome to episode 25 of Ask the Agent. We got a special guest today with us, Carol Saltis. We're gonna talk about building your real estate drive. Hey guys, we got a great episode for you today. Uh, special guest Carol Saltis with us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Carol had the idea of talking a little bit about building your real estate tribe. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, talk going on within the real estate community of uh, building teams, right? And before you build your, you know, your actual team, maybe buyers, agents, listing agents, stuff. There's a lot of other teammates that you need to kind of build in the real estate space. And uh, that's what we kind of wanted to chat about today, how to go about doing that, some things to think about, and what are these different levels. So, um, you know, I think that the clear one to start with that everybody's got to do when you first get your license or no matter where you are in your career is, is the, an agency, right? Mm -hmm. So you had recently uh, joined our agency. What are some of the things that are going through your head when you're, when you're thinking about joining an agency? Because you're really partnering with them. They're part of your team. I think for me, the first thing that I thought about was um, coming here was what attracted me was the technology and all the systems. Um, once I got here, it's been more about community and the giving back. It's what it's really the culture. Sure. Sure. So, um, you know, find a broker that, you know, has got things that align with you. Those things are not going to align with everybody, right? Um, there's something for everyone. There's there's something for everybody. There is no brokerage that is right for everyone and everybody. There's you know, all different kinds of commission splits out there. There's all different kinds of culture out there. There's all different kinds of leadership out there. There's independent brands. There's, you know, national brands. So find something that, you know, suits your needs. So you've picked an agency, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't, kind of think the next thing that you got to do is you got to find a mentor in the business, right? So you're, you're actually one of the mentors that helps uh, onboard some of our newer agents. And, mm -hmm. you know, talk about, you know, some of the advantages of, of having a mentor in your mind? Well, I think that when you first start out that um, it, you're overwhelmed. That's the word I hear all the time. And I think having a mentor just, you know, makes it possible for you to have somebody to turn to to ask questions on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when I hear that term mentor, I, you know, the thing that comes to mind for, for me now that I've kind of had multiple different uh, mentors in multiple areas of my life is it's, it's just the quickest way to the top. It's, it's almost like cheating in my mind that you're, you know, this person has already been through the trials and tribulations of whatever it is you're about to try and do. And they're giving it to you for free most of the time. I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's coffee, it's lunch, it's listening, you know, through a wall and hearing what they're saying or just being around mm -hmm. somebody. Um, and I think some agents really need to, to take a look in the mirror when they're selecting that person. Got to find somebody that's above you and, and maybe even got to work for free or work for cheap, you know. You'll get somewhere where you can learn that stuff instead of all of a sudden you just want to be a top producer selling high-end stuff. Like you got to cut your teeth somewhere. Um, so, so do more deals and, you know, maybe do it for less money. And I think it's important when you first start out to, to pay attention and to be everywhere that you can possibly be. Be at open houses, be in the office and figure out who it is you want to learn from. You, you know, you're not going to necessarily learn just from one person. You'll, you'll figure out who, who you want to be like eventually. Sure. Sure. And you, and you may switch mentors, right? You may right. start with somebody right. and end with somebody else. So let's assume you've got a mentor. You're starting to get your daily habits together. I think the next thing is accountability partner. You know, I see a lot of agents struggle with, they know what they should be doing, but maybe they're not doing those things. You know, what, what's your take on um, accountability partner? So I've had different accountability partners. And, you know, when you work in an office, you have a lot of friends and, um, you don't want your friends to be your accountability partners because you let your you let each other off the hook. Um, you know, find somebody that you know you're gonna is gonna make you do your best and that you're gonna push yourself and that they're you know they're not gonna listen to your excuses. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think the other key thing um, is there's got to be some stakes. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, monetary stakes. It's got to be something, you know, um, whether you got to dress up in something funny or you got to eat something weird or you got to sing in front of a group or just something that's going to make you say, you know what, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to make those calls or I'm going to go to the gym or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think that's key. Um, so what about like, OK, I'm in it. I'm doing the right things. And now I'm starting to do deals. 
right? So now I think we've got to talk about building that that kind of the real estate team, not not buyer's agent, listing agent, but home inspectors, appraisers, uh, surveyors, attorneys, lenders. You know, talk to me about the importance of, of those things in, in your career. Um, that's something that um, I work really hard at to have the right people around me. Um, you know, and I think that I. Th- I think that you need to have a variety of people. Um, it's just important to build that community so that you can be referring to them, they can be referring to you, and you have those resources for your for your buyers and your sellers um, because you're only as good as who you refer, yeah. you know, because it comes back to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you couldn't have said it better. I think too many agents try and do too much, right? They're trying to give lending advice or trying to talk about rates or why you should get a certain loan product like you should have somebody that you can turn to and go you know what i i know you've already got a pre-approval but let me tell you this lender that i've got you are going to love this person they're going to help you through the process and they're going to be there for you post-closing right and you need that in all aspects you need an inspector that you you can feel that same way about um, you need an attorney that's going to be there maybe on the weekends or after hours that can get back to your client, get back mm-hmm. to you. You might have a question before you're writing an offer. Um, so as you build those things, you know, now you can get a hold of those people. And now you can also, when you're talking to your clients, say, look, I've got access to the best people. If you just call up, you're, you're not going to get the time of day from them. But because of the relationships that I've built, we can get access to them. Um, so the last thing that we kind of had on our list here was... Um, was building client databases, right? Um, and I think mm-hmm. a couple of different ways to, to talk about clients. And I, I think the first thing is you, you want to be able to work with the people that you want to be able to work with and turn certain business away, right? And I think you, you kind of talked about the, the importance of picking the right client. So, so talk to me about that. Right. Um, you know, and I think we've talked before about, you know, when you're first in the business, you're going to, you know, you've got to be willing to take you know, pretty much everything that comes your way. But you get, you know, as you go along, you get to choose. And, you know, sometimes you, you know, you'll find out you maybe work better with sellers than you do with buyers. Or um, you, you know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin so that you can't do a good job. Um, If you, if you go um, out of your area, you know, you're sometimes better to refer to another agent than to try to go into an area that you're not really good at. Um, And so that's another group of people. That's another piece of the tribe. I like to have agents in my office and agents in other areas that I can refer to so that, you know, I can give my people the best of the best and, and I know that they're getting good service. Yeah, I mean, two, two things sticking out in what you're saying to me, uh, not even just geographic area. Like, I see some agents trying to do condos, single families, flips, investment properties, commercial. Like, really tough to be good at all of that stuff, you know? So if you could have a couple of people that you say, hey, look, if I get that multifamily or that commercial deal, I'm just going to refer to this guy. He really knows what he's doing. He really understands investing. Let him run those people around. I'm going to focus on X. You know? And I think the other thing, and, you know, sometimes this is a, an ego thing people don't want to admit. Sometimes you're just not a fit with your client or your client's not a good fit with you. You know, refer them. It's okay. You know, yeah. it's okay. And refer them to somebody within the office maybe and, and take a referral fee on it. Yeah. Um, and I'll touch quickly, too, um, on, on picking your clients. Be careful. You started off on the right path which is when you first get into this business, I can't tell you how many people get into this. I want to start on the high end. I just want to get into the luxury market. And it's like, you can't just break into that stuff. You know, you've got to cut your teeth somewhere and you've got to hustle the lower end stuff. And then three, four, five years in, guess what? Those people start selling that stuff and buying the bigger stuff. Or you hook up with an investor who's, you know, he's buying $100,000 properties, but he owns a half a million dollar, a million dollar property that he's going to turn around and sell. So don't start off you know, being selective with your clients. Make sure you hustle, do deals, learn the business before you start to get uh, choosy. So, awesome episode. Thank you so much for being on. You're welcome. We'll see you guys next week.